I want to stop right there. I want to talk about this morning for just a little while, let the church grow up. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Repeat that with me. Say, let the church grow up. I believe that it's high time for the body of Christ, for the church, to grow up. I'll never forget, I'm a proud product of the North Little Rock school system. Yes, sir. Proud graduate of North Little Rock Northeast. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And I'll never forget that as a first grader, I had a teacher who was legendary in North Little Rock. Cleo Bowes, Miss Bowes didn't play. Her reputation preceded herself. Miss Bowes had taught my brother and sister. And I'll never forget one day when we had a substitute teacher. Darren, we had a substitute teacher and I, all the class thought that this was an ideal time to clown. And I'll never forget because while the teacher was trying to get the classroom under control, I got so excited about having a substitute. I stood up in my chair and just started jumping. Showing out, yeah. Before I knew it, Miss Bowles showed up, grabbed me by my arm, and led me out to the hallways. Now I realize some of this younger generation, you know nothing about corporate punishment. But in my generation, it was not optional. If you clown, they were going to clown on you. Needless to say, that was my last time standing up in a chair where the Miss Bowles was in the classroom or absent. Sad commentary this morning, many of us as believers in Christ, we act like we got to substitute God. We act like God is not present. And many of us take opportunities to act immature and out of character, not realizing that the God we serve is everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. It might be dark, but God still sees you. You might be out of town, but God still sees you. And so, my brothers and sisters, I believe that it is high time for the church to grow up. The world is in need of a church that is going to grow up, not just in numbers, because all of us want to be a part of a growing church, but the world needs a church that is going to grow spiritually, not just in popularity, because right now, Grace United, we're pretty popular because of what God is doing right here. But that's not what it's all about, popularity. Yeah, some of us want the church to grow financially. But when all is said and done, it's not about the money that we have, but it's about the maturity that we walk in as a church. The goal is maturity. The goal is not numbers. The goal is not finances. The goal is not popularity, but God wants us to grow and mature as believers. God wants us to grow in the ability for, first of all, to understand the Word of God. Somebody say the Word of God. Yeah, the Bible tells us that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of God. I say all the time, I don't want you to leave here saying, Bishop said. I want you to leave here saying, the Word of God said. 
because it's the Word of God that builds our faith. The Word of God is able to lead us and to guide us. That's why the Word says, His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Is there anybody here that needs the Word of God? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need to grow in our understanding of the Word of God. We need to grow in our ability to witness to others about God. Somebody say, I'm a witness. It's always good to invite people to church, but can you witness to them one-on-one about what God has done for you and who God is to you? We need some witnesses because God has given all of us a ministry of reconciliation, and that is to lead others to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It's time for the church to grow up. Not, not only should we grow in our understanding about the Word of God, not only should we grow in the ability to be a witness to others, but get this right here. We need to grow in our prayer life. Somebody say my prayer life. Isn't it amazing we want everybody to pray for us, but we don't pray for ourselves? If you know God is your Father, Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Ghost as your company keeper, I got some good news for you. You got a hotline to glory. Oh, my God. Can I tell y'all this? When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom. Y'all know what happened when that happened? It gave us access. You don't need to preach here. You don't need to pope. You can go to God by your… Oh, my God. And get this right here. Not only should you have a prayer life for yourself, you've got a shallow prayer life. If all you're doing is praying for yourself. Somebody say grow up. When you start growing up, you not only pray for yourself, but you pray for others. Are y'all with me in the house? Because there comes a time that God is supplying your needs, but all of us know somebody that needs some prayer. And God wants us to stand in the gap not only for ourselves and our families, but for others. Somebody say it's time for the church to grow up. And it's here in these verses that Paul challenges the church to grow up. Because first of all, God has given the church what we need to grow up. It would be unfair to God for God to to challenge us to grow, but never give us the resources to grow. The church will grow up, get this right here, when the right people with the right gifts lead it. Y'all get that? That, There it is. Can can y'all see that over there? When the right people with the right gifts lead. The the worst thing to be in a job and you're out of position. They got you doing something that you're not equipped to do. Let, Let me talk to some men. It's bad to have a starting position on the team, but they got you playing in a position that you're not equipped to play. Are y'all with me in the house? And God has given to the body special grace. Somebody say grace. Grace. God gives us grace gifts to be able to do what we need to do in our proper place. Some churches are struggling because they've got the wrong people in place. He says, each one of us, meaning that within our unity, there is diversity. In the first six verses of this chapter, Paul had expounded on the importance of church unity. Although the church is to be one body, one faith, one family, this unity does not mean uniformity. In other words, we're not all alike. 
we're not robots, and we are not to look and act just alike because God has given us different gifts to complement the whole body. Paul said, if all of us was eyes, how could we hear? If all of us was legs, how can we pick up stuff? We have unity, but yet diversity. Somebody say diversity. God has added diversity within the church, within each and every one of us, different gifts. Are y'all with me? Paul said, to each one of us, grace was given. The word grace simply means the ability of each member to perform his or her assigned service. It means the ability to do the work God has called us to do. Paul also reminded us that we were not born with this gift, but God gave it to us. Are y'all with me? And get this right here. I said it's a grace gift because we didn't do nothing to earn it. So we have no reason to brag and boast about what we do in the kingdom of God. Who should get the glory? God, God amen. Y'all paying attention this morning. My God. And so Paul says, in verse 11, and he is given to some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. For what? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. It'd take a whole sermon to deal with all these different gifts. But he's given these positions for the edifying of the body. Let me put it this way. God has given all of us an assignment. Say, I have an assignment. With your assignment comes an anointing. Are y'all with me? What's the anointing? It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit to allow us to be effective in what God has assigned us to do. Oh, my God. It's a special gifting. Amen. And get this right here. It messes up other people because you make it look easy what God has called you to do. But what they don't realize, it's not you. It's the anointing that is on you. Are y'all with me in the house? Oh, my God. So, so get this right here. The church will grow up when the right people are leading. Number two, the church will grow up when lay leadership is prepared to do ministry. The first point was up here. The second point is out here. <laughs> because sometimes we want all the workers to be up here. Y'all come to church and y'all look up here. But, oh, I'm up here this morning looking out there. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yes. Notice what it says in verse 12. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, for the building up of the body of Christ. The job of the pastor teacher is to do all, is not to do all of the serving. We are to equip you and give ministry away. Are y'all with me? Because if the pew or the chairs have not been prepared, we're going to work ourselves to death. You didn't just show up to look cute on Sunday morning. You showed up to get the Word of God to be built up, to roll your sleeves up, and say, I'm here to get busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anybody come to serve this morning? Oh, my God. God has called the pastors, the leaders, to equip and empower. But sometimes leadership, get this, y'all, can be insecure and don't want to give away ministry. 
See, right there goes a ooh. Come on. One, two, three. Ooh. Yeah. When leadership is insecure, leadership thinks they've got to do everything. Story was told of a pastor. He would open up every Sunday morning. He walked around with a, a big pocket of keys. He worked the sound system. He led praise and worship. He preached. He directed the choir. And the church sat around and watched him work himself to death. And once he died, no one else was prepared to take on any responsibility because he had been doing it. But God has called us as leaders to be like parents. We have to raise our children to be able to function in life. We are to train others. One of my spiritual daughters, Tiffany, got on to me a few weeks ago. Tiffany said, I'm making phone calls. You ought not have to make all the phone calls because you've trained me to do this. But she said, let me do what you train me to do and tell your people just because they don't hear from you. They're hearing from one of your representatives. Are y'all with me in the house? Let me give y'all some Bible to back it up. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law said, you got to distribute some of this work out because if you don't, you're going to hurt yourself and the congregation. Somebody say, raise up workers. Raise up workers. Hallelujah. Yes. So first of all, we've got to equip the pew, the seats, to serve and to do ministry. Number three, when its aim is to produce mature believers. Somebody say mature, mature. believers. Believer. Not a spiritual daycare. Let, let me preach to this side over here. Not a spiritual daycare. Y'all ever went to a daycare? We got one right, right across the hallway there. We got a daycare. And it's amazing when I come downstairs sometime and I watch the kids, they're taking toys from each other. And they're being chased all around the playground. And they're crying because somebody got their toy. And y'all know we act like that sometimes because if somebody get our seat. I know y'all didn't even see that coming, did y'all didn't see that coming. I've been sitting in this seat for six months, and now somebody beat me to my It ain't your seat. <laughs> your name ain't nowhere on that seat. <laughs> you didn't even buy that seat. <laughs> The work of the ministry, God wants us to grow up. Now, get this right here. When we start growing up, get this, y'all. We start growing out of some stuff. Say, Lord, help me grow out of some stuff. Mm. You, you already thinking about what you need to grow out of. Yeah, and, and, and this is the day and time to start growing out of some stuff. Let, 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 me, let me bring it to the natural. You know, you got some stuff in your closet. That, that you keep saying, I'm going to get back in it. <laughs> but, but if the truth be told, 
Y'all can fill in the blank. Y'all can fill in the blank. <laughs> but spiritually speaking, there ought to be some stuff. Unforgiveness. Somebody say, I'll grow it. Jealousy. I'll grow it. Hatred. Here's another one. Pettiness. Envy, strife, outgrow that stuff. But then, as we outgrow some stuff, God wants us to grow into some stuff. Are y'all with me? How about love? Grow into it. How about your prayer life? Grow into that. How about meekness? Smiling, Lord, come on, come on. Because some of us need to learn how to smile. Hey, do it, do it right now, come on. There you go. <laughs> yeah, patience. Because if the truth be told, there are some mistakes that we've made in life because we were not. <laughs> I was talking to a friend yesterday. We both were talking about if we could turn back Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. So there's some stuff that God wants us to grow out of, but there's some stuff he wants us to grow into. But here's the last thing. Here's the last thing, and I'm through. The church will grow up when we can declare true with love and grace. Y'all hear that? When we can declare true with love and grace. In, in this day and time, sometimes we want to be so dogmatic about truth that we leave out love and grace. Now, I don't know about y'all, I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for love and grace. Am I the only one in this house that, that need a little love and a little grace? I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a saying that I declare all the time. Y'all get this. Y'all get this. Grace does not condemn. Say that. Say grace, grace. Does, not does not condemn. Here's the, here's, the, here's, here's the next thing, Vince. Grace does not condone. Y'all, come on, say it with me. Grace, grace. does not condone. Y'all want another last part? But grace will correct with love and patience. Oh, that'll preach. <laughs> grace does not condemn. And y'all got to understand, there's going to be some people who are going to come. And outwardly, they're not going to look good. But grace should not condemn them. Are y'all with me? Some of them are going to be participating in some stuff that they shouldn't be participating in. They're wrong, but grace is going to love them in spite of. We're not going to condone what they're doing, but we're not going to condemn them for what they're doing. Are y'all with me? But what will grace do? Grace will correct with love and patience. I believe that 90% of us in this congregation right now have benefited from a God who didn't condemn us, didn't condone, but corrected us with love and patience. Most of us should have been dead a long time ago <laughs> because of some stuff that we used to participate in. But love and grace and God wants us as a body of Christ to grow up. Put the right people in leadership. Laity starts growing up. The aim is mature believers and that we can declare the truth with love and grace. Are y'all with me today? 
Say, I'm ready, I'm ready. to grow up.